All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the, the fastest way to graph um, uh, something in the polar coordinate plane. So let's sort of, let's work with the same function we had in the last video, where oops, where uh, r was equal to um, sine of theta. So let's say we have the function r is equal to sine of theta. Now, and, and we want to we want to graph this in our polar coordinate plane. So let me just draw the polar coordinate plane real quick. We have our Again, we don't have an x and y axis. We have uh, a theta, I guess you can call axis, and, and, and a radius of an output. So this is optional, but you can sort of draw the, the radius, one, two, three, et cetera, as dots. So you have some sort of reference to where the one and two and three are at, a, at every given angle. Usually going to three is, is sufficient enough, um, depending on the amplitude of your function, but this should be all right. So this, uh, this is a, R theta uh, plane. Okay, so so the last video what we did was we, we plugged in points and we got some outputs for the radius and we noticed that it was symmetric and, and we graphed it. But we can do this in a much quicker way by graphing a sine function with respect to its radius like this. So th the radius is our, uh, is our uh, y-axis and the theta is our x-axis. And so graphing this, we get to see the, the, um, how the sine function um, uh, how the sine function behaves. And this allows us to much this allows us to graph it in the uh, polar coordinate plane system much easier. So the sine function looks like this, start at 0, 0, and then we go up, and then it goes down, up, down, and then it repeats, right? Wait, let's, let's make it a little more symmetric goes like that, right? And we can just uh, label some of the points up until one period. So this is zero, obviously. This right here is uh, pi over two because sine of pi over two is at its maximum. This right here is back at zero, that's pi. This is three pi over two. This right here is back at two pi and that's one period. Um, so now that we know how the radius of this polar coordinate function reacts, depending on the angle, we can much easy uh, we, can, we can graph this much easier. Um, so we know at zero it's at zero, and then it starts growing up until pi over two. So so it should it should be something like that, and then we know that its maximum should be one, right? So we can stop there. Wait, let me do a different color first. So again, it starts growing. The radius right here. It's it starts growing up until pi over two. Right. So like that, and then it starts decreasing again up until pi. And then from uh from pi. It does the same thing, but now the neg in a negative radius. So basically, as we go here, it's going to just reflect back to these points again, since it's a negative radius. And again, the reason for that is, if we have, for example, a point such that we have a negative one and let's say three pi over two, which is actually a point on this graph, it would the angle would be at three pi over two, which is here, but the radius would be negative one. So it would reflect back to this point here. If this point was one comma three pi over two, then we would just go to three pi over two and then down one, which would be here. But it's negative one, so it reflects back to here. So that's why it's uh, it's symmetric, and we don't have to worry about the behavior from pi to uh, pi to two pi because it just it will it will carve this circle once again. So this right here is our graph, and in, th in this time it was uh, arguably much quicker than plugging in points for theta and getting some radiuses out. See you guys in the next video.